Over the course of surfing history, surfers and shapers alike have looked for the perfect material to make surfboards that are both light, durable, and high performance. This uh, quest for the perfect material has led to polyurethane foam, um, but there's some problems. Polyurethane is considered a polymer. It is made in a chemical process where two monomers are combined, forming either a solid, a foam, or a liquid. In the case of the surfboard, we're using a foam. But basically, this product is virtually indestructible, which has many environmental effects. So when a shaper goes to make a surfboard, um, he starts out with a polyurethane foam blank. Uh, he carves that blank down, whittles it down, and then covers it with fiberglass and resin to give it its hard feel. Um, the problem with that is there's a significant amount of waste associated with shaping a surfboard. Um, the blank starts out as a thick uh, block of foam and ends up as a very narrow, thin surfboard. Um, and the question was, uh, after all these years, all that waste was just being thrown away and not used. So definitely not very sustainable. Joe Santley, an individual from San Clemente, recognized the toxicity of surfboards and surfboard building and decided to move to green foam building, which is recycling the foam and reusing it to make surfboard blanks. When everybody's heard about the bird. What inspired both Steve and I when we started Green Foam was just that, you know, being able to, to take a pile of trash and make it into something. And because we're both surfers and we both care tremendously about the environment, um, we just feel like, uh, you know, it was our responsibility to try to do something. And so we just, just inspired by the fact that maybe that we could disprove a myth. They said, for scientists were saying, you can't recycle rigid polyurethane foam. And we're like, yeah, we can. So that was inspiring to do it. Once we actually proved concept, then we were very inspired. Like uh -huh. the, the very millisecond that Steve and I saw the first blank come out of the mold, I knew, right, just looking at it before I even touched it, that it, we succeeded. I was like, oh, done, it's done, yeah. and, and we did it. And today, the blanks I just showed you over at Lost, those are high quality, perfect. first perfect, you know, they're making, he just shaped a board for Jordy Smith, shaped one for Andy Iron, shaped a bunch for, like I said, for all the team riders. And um, like when I was at the contest last week, Jordy asked me specifically, he goes, hey, can I get a couple green blanks, give them to Mayhem? I said, sure. Cool. So they want them and they're good enough if, you know, yeah. if they're good enough for those guys. So what would you say? Good enough for me. Yeah. <clears throat> no, they can't surf like that. So. <laughs> We're already in our like sixth generation. We've been doing several generations of like when the team boards or when the green foam, foam blanks are made, those are already recycled blanks. So. When we take the waste from that and recycle that, that second generation, we, we're done like five, six generations of recycled material. So it can go on forever. It's like it doesn't matter. It's the same thing going into the same thing. Here we are at Lost Surfboards in San Clemente in the ghetto. We're going to go in here and check out how um, the waste is made, and then you'll see what we do with the waste, and you'll see some of the green foam too. Check it out. This is Tony Montana's bedroom. and. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Basically, I come in here and take this foam dust, and this is what's going right here. This is what's going into the landfills every day from every surfboard shaper everywhere in the world. Anywhere there's boards being made, they have they have just incredible amounts of this foam going into landfills and stuff. So. It was our mission to figure out, okay, what can we do with this stuff rather than throwing it in the landfill, you know? We've got to do something. It just... There's a polymer and an ISO to make a blank. There's a polymer mixed with an ISO. When they mix, that's when the chemical reaction goes off. They yeah. mix the two properties together. They quickly pour them into a mold. The mold gets shut, clamped shut, and the foam expands inside the mold. 22 minutes later, approximately, it's done expanding. They pop the mold. The board 
during that process, all the gases, that's when all the environmental things are going on. Um, there's tons of VOCs being created right then and there when it's expanding. That's the time when, you know, the harm is being done to the environment. So by putting our, you know, the dust into this, the waste back into it, we're just reducing the amount of parent chemicals you're needing for that and keeping the dust out of the landfill. So we're getting two pluses, you yeah. know, keeping it out of landfill and reducing the amount of material from a sustainability or practicality or you know green side of things it's it's really cool that we're able to do that because it's not many industries can actually recycle the same thing right back in without affecting the quality of the new product right and that was our biggest our biggest hurdle before was making a blank that the pros will ride that was right. to me all that mattered if we can't make a board that the top pros ride why then why make it? If right. they're not going to do it, then I'm over it. Okay. Biggest obstacle as a company is making money yeah. out of it. Because we, our margins, surfboards and to begin with have very small margins in manufacturing, but to us it wasn't about the money. It was about making a statement that we can do better as an industry and as a population, a society in anything we're doing. And um, so the biggest hurdle we see ahead of us is getting the um, retailers and the consumers to understand what we're doing and buy into it and support it. And, you know, when I was at your age, there wasn't even a class. There was no, there didn't even exist. The term sustainability didn't even, wasn't even around. We didn't even talk about it. Like sustainability, what? Huh? Recycle who? Are you kidding? What? No, we're, a, you know, since the industrial revolution, we've been a society that's just, you know, Produce, produce, and abuse, and just, you know, waste. The bottom line is, is like, in life, there's always going to be people that say, you can't do this, you can't do that, and if you come up with a good idea, don't ever let anyone tell you not to do it. Do it, just, and don't let anything stop you from doing what you believe in. If you have any kind of passion or any kind of, like, balls, you know, you got to put your balls on the table and not worry about what people say. Like when we started doing this shit three years ago, people didn't people didn't want to hear about it. They're like, God, you're wasting your time. Why don't you get a real job? Why don't you do this? I'm like, I ain't wasting my time because there's no higher honor than than protecting Mother Nature and the Earth. I mean, to me, it's an honor to be even be part of something that's like some type of solution. What Joey Stanley and the guys at Green Film are doing in San Clemente is a great start. They're taking the waste from the surfboard production process and using it to create new sustainable foam blanks. But there's only one problem. It's still polyurethane. Joey's currently working on a recipe to create a 100% renewable foam blank made from castor oil. We're looking forward to the future and we can't wait to ride it. The choice is yours.